Hey ChatGPT, can you build an actual app? Absolutely. Where do we start? So I want us to confirm the skill level of ChatGPT. We'll put it through a technical test to see if it can build a real app, not a to-do list. At the end, we will judge its performance using these three categories. Does it know how to build UI? Can it manage state in a good way? Can it talk to actual APIs? We are building a website that converts your mood into a thoughtful tweet. We'll call it AI mood. Since ChatGPT has no control over our system, there's a few rules to make things fair. Number one, we will create the base project and set the startup view. Number two, we will execute additional instructions like the file creation or file updates. And number three, we will do partial replacements in the code where needed. The way we'll do this is by asking ChatGPT to write the code. We copy the code, then paste it into our project and then check the output result. To save both of our time, I'll copy the code from each prompt and paste it without showing you the entire text response. Let's get started with the UI. ChatGPT, please enter into text only mode. Can you create a view with text AI mode at the top? It should be on two lines with a font of size 40 and a font weight of 900, followed by an input field and lastly a button that says get to it. Copy and paste and we have a compile error. The raise button is deprecated. Please replace with a material button, with white background and black text. Let's copy this over, save, that's working. Now we have a very basic UI. Let's do some styling. Make the background color of the view 151515. Move the AI mood text to the top left corner and use the Open Sans font from Google Fonts. I'll copy the styling code. So the instructions were to get the font from Google Fonts. Okay, let's add the weights, copy the code, and then add it to the HTML. Then copy the Google Fonts package and install that package. This package is failing to install. The version of Google Fonts provided doesn't exist. Okay, let's copy the updated code. Let's also copy the fonts import, paste that and copy the Google Fonts.OpenSans for the style and replace that. That's looking much better. Can you give me updated code for the AI mood text only where the text is left aligned and the height is reduced so the words sit on top of each other? In addition, can we update the code to use Google Fonts.OpenSans for the styling? Also, please update the padding to 50 all around. Let's move this over and this is looking much better. Now please update the input field to be in the center, fill the background, round the borders and make the color 252525. Limit the width to 45% of the screen and change the hint text to tell me your mood with color 838383. Let's check if this works, works out of the box. Now add a centered text between AI mood and the input field that says tell me your mood in one or two words and I'll write you a fire tweet to express it. The text should be white, the width capped at 40% screen width and use Google Fonts Open Sans with a font size of 22. Let's copy this over. Not bad at all, the UI styling I'm happy with. It's not perfect, most failures were due to outdated knowledge or docs. Let's move on to state. Please add a boolean to indicate a busy state. When busy, show a circular loading indicator in the button and show three dots in the place of the explanation text. So it created some new classes, let's copy it over. Okay, that breaks because we need the my homepage class. I don't have the definition of my homepage. Please give me that code as well. Okay, let's copy this over. And now I'd like to see the busy state. Give me only the code to change in the onPressed function to toggle between true and false for is busy. Let's paste that in and it's not working. Okay, the earlier code broke the app because the view name has changed. Please change the name back to my view. Let's replace that. Okay, awesome, the busy state is working. Please move the state functionality into a new class called my view model. 
So we'll create a new file and we'll paste the code in there and replace the view code as well. So as we see now, it didn't tell me what to import. So let's ask for a fix. So my screen stopped recording after I asked for the import fixes. We went through all the back and forth to get the packages installed. And here's all the responses. Where we ended up is the package being installed, but the toggle wasn't working anymore. And I'll continue from that point. Remove the is busy check and call only the toggle is busy function. Okay, let's copy that and it's back to working. So this section wasn't that great. Overall, three out of six worked fine. The rest needed a lot more prompting. So let's head on to the final test, which is integration. In the view model, can you make an API request to the OpenAI API to generate some text based on a prompt? You know, it's so crazy that it's writing this. I don't even know this API, which is quite cool. Let's copy this and it generated some broken code. Let's check the error. Okay. The HTTP post function doesn't take a string anymore. It now expects a URI. Let's replace that. All compile issues fixed. Please call the generate text function using the value from the input field in the my view file when we press the get to it button. Okay, let's copy the controller definition. It's added to the input field. Then copy this function to call the generate text function. The last thing, can you change the text in the description to show the generated text returned only if the value is not empty? Okay, let's do that quickly and then time to test if this works. So the only change that I'll do is add my API key since the OpenAI can't get access to that. Let's enter a prompt and run. Okay, it's broken. No such method error. We got a no such method error. So in addition to the attempt to fix the code, we also got instructions to go read the documentation ourselves which is a good point to make. So let's take a quick look and it seems like the URL used is out of date. Based on the documentation, the URL you're using is not correct. Please replace with a v1 slash completions endpoint. The body is also updated, which is cool. Let's replace that and retest. We'll enter a prompt and still getting the same issue. This looks like an out of date docs issue. So there's only two changes required here based on the docs. I don't think ChatGPT will be able to make these changes. So what we'll do is change the word engine to model and we'll use DaVinci 3 and not 2. And let's test again and it works. It's not the best process, but it's very promising. I would place ChatGPT as a beginner software developer. It required a lot of prompting for some basic things. It also lost context a few times and I had to ask for modifications. I did a few other tests that I excluded from this video, but I'll be making more of these. So please make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.